Hey guys. We currently have only one ground. When the player completes running over the ground one, then it starts falling down. So, now we need more grounds. So in this video, we will make spawn random grounds. We will create a game object to spawn ground in order to determine the right spawning position. So, I am going to create the game object called ground spawner. Now, we will add a box collider 2D. Now, I am going to edit the collider shape and make it so long. Now, place it at the end of the ground. Make sure it is over the ground. This game object will always move along with the player, and it will also keep detecting the ground if any ground is there. Now, if the ground spawner game objects ever found there is no ground in front, then it will immediately spawn a new ground. Since the ground will keep detecting the ground, this is why we have added a box collider. Because, the box collider will keep colliding with the ground, when the collision will end then we will understand there is no more grounds, so this is the time to create a new ground. However, there is a problem, since the game object has a collider, so the game object will not be able to go through the ground, because the ground also has a collider. So, in order to make the game object be able to go through the ground, we have to enable an option called, is trigger. This option will make the ground spawner game object capable to go through the ground. But, if we want to detect the collision with the ground, then we also need the rigid body component for the ground spawner game object. Because, at least one object must have a rigid body component in order to collide. However, now we will create a new script called ground spawner. I am going to attach the script to the ground spawner game object. Now, we will also attach the follow player game object to the ground spawner, so the object will move along with the player. Now, we will open the ground spawner script in Visual Studio. Since the ground spawner game object will spawn grounds, so we will first have to get all the grounds. We have to create three variables to store those grounds. So I am going to create game object type variable called ground1. Now, either we can create a different variable like this one, or we can add a comma and then write ground2. This also means we have two different variables. Now, we need another one for the ground3. We will now create a bool variable called hasGround. We will make the default value true, because the ground spawner object is currently placed over the ground1 game object. However, this variable will be true when the ground spawner will keep colliding with the ground. Once the collision ends, it will be false. So we will understand when to spawn a new ground. However, first we will need to detect the collision between ground spawner and the ground. So, we will need the function called onCollisionEnter2D. But this time we will use another function called onTriggerEnter2D, because currently we have the isTrigger option enabled for the box collider component. So, we will detect the trigger inside this function. As the isTrigger is enabled, so the collision will be trigger instead. However, we will now check the trigger with ground object by the tag.
Here the collision dot game object means that game object which the ground spawner has collided and then we have checked if the object is under the ground tag. Now, when the collision starts, we want the has ground to become true. After that we are going to need another function called onTriggerExit2D. We can know if the collision has ended by this function. So, just like the onCollisionEnter2D, we will first check the collided game object whether it's a ground, and then we will make the hasGround variable false. So, now we will make a function called spawn ground. Then we will be able to spawn a ground just by calling this function. So, I am going to write public void spawn ground. In this case, since we want a random ground will be spawned, so we will generate random number here. So, I am going to first create a variable called random number. We will put the generated random number to this variable. I am going to write random.range and then we will write the range for random number. The range will be 1 to 4. This will generate a random number within 1, 2, or 3. So, we will now do some if condition. The first condition would be if the random number becomes 1, then the first ground will be spawned. So, how we can spawn a ground? We need to write instantiate. And then we will pass some parameters inside the parenthesis. First parameter would be the name of the game object that we want to spawn. So, I am going to type the first ground name which is ground1. And then we will pass the position where the game object will spawn. I am going to type new vector 3 and then we will pass the x, y, and z value. I am going to open Unity to teach you in a better way. Now, I will temporarily place another ground next to the ground 1. Now, you can see there is no space between two ground which doesn't look interesting. So, if we put some space here, then it looks pretty interesting. Now, since the spawn ground script is attached to the ground spawner game object, so we will use the X position of this object, and then we will add 3 unit space with the ground spawner position, in this way we will get the right place to spawn the ground. So, I am going to type transform.position.x plus 3. Now, we will pass the Y value, for the Y value we will type the bottom position where the ground 1 is currently placed. So, I am going to copy the value and paste it here. Now, since the number contains decimal, so we must have to add F after the value. Otherwise, it will show error. After that we will pass the Z value which should be 0. Now we will pass the rotation. In this case, I want the rotation of the game object would be same as the prefab's rotation. So, we will type quaternion.identity. Then I am going to copy the first if condition and then paste it underneath. Now, we will make this too. This time we want the second ground, so I am going to make it ground too and then we will change the Y value only. If I open Unity and move the ground a little up, that will be more interesting. So, we want the second ground will spawn right here. This ground will only be spawned if the random number becomes 2. Now, 
we will copy this if condition one more time, and paste it for the ground 3. So, we will now change the number here, and then the ground name. Now, the Y value of the position would be changed here. First, I am going to see where should I place it. I think this position is good. However, I am going to copy this, and then paste it in Visual Studio. You can of course tweak those values. Now, we have to call the function from somewhere in order to spawn a ground. So, I will do it inside the update function. So, I am going to write another if condition. This would be if the has ground variable is false, then spawn a new ground. Here you can see we used an exclamation mark. This is a sign of writing false. If we don't use the exclamation mark, then it will mean true that we already know. However, when the has ground will be false, then we want a ground to be spawned. So, I am going to just call the spawn ground function like this. This should spawn a ground. Now, after spawning the ground we want the has ground variable will be true again. Otherwise the update function will keep spawning ground. Ok, so I am going to save the script by pressing Ctrl S and then we will go back to the Unity editor. Now we can delete the ground 2 game object, because I don't need this anymore. Then, we will select the ground spawner game object. In the inspector, we can see there is some options called ground 1, ground 2, and ground 3. These are the variables we've created in the script. Now, we will attach our all grounds to this variables. So, I am going to open the prefabs folder, and then drag and drop the ground 1 game object to the ground 1 slot. In the same way, we will attach the other two grounds to their slot. Then we will do another thing. We can see the rigid body has an option called constraints. Here we will freeze the Y position. Because, if the Y is not freeze, then it will keep falling down because of the gravity, and we definitely don't want that. Now, we will also freeze the rotation Z. Because, this game object shouldn't be rotated. Now, I am going to play the game. We can see everything is working fine, so I will see you in the next video.